Open banking was introduced really to support innovation and also increase competition in the payments industry. So if we go back about five years um, before the introduction of open banking, um, we were in a, a world where there was increasing use of online and mobile banking. And in that context, fintechs were starting to develop innovative products that would help people manage their, their accounts and their finances more efficiently. But actually, the regulatory framework was not in place at that point to support provision of those products. And what fintechs found was often they were prevented from accessing customers' accounts to get the data they needed in order to provide those services. And so that's where open banking came in. So what open banking did was effectively it required account banks to open up um, their accounts and allow these third parties to come in and access data. It also introduced a set of technical standards around how these account banks and fintechs or, or other third party providers needed to communicate and interact um, to ensure that um, customer data was treated securely. Um, and so particularly we saw um, the development of a standard API application programming interface um, where the nine main retail banks in the UK um, had to use this open banking model um, in order to provide access. Um, to customers' accounts. So this is really about openness. If a customer chooses to share their data with a bank or non-bank financial institution, then that entity must provide the developer with free access to the customer's data. And that could include a host of data relating to the customer's transactions, banking and other financial data. Third-party developers can then use that information for a range of different um, applications and services. So um, these could potentially provide for faster payments and greater financial transparency options. And it also opens the door to marketing and cross-selling opportunities. There are also some hurdles, in particular in relation to data privacy and cybersecurity. Open banking is very much a developing trend. Um, and it's something that we see not only in the UK, but also actually in other jurisdictions. Um, although the UK led the way really in introducing open banking from 2018. Um, but we also have seen the introduction of a similar regime in the European Union um, under the Payment Services Directive. And actually that regime also applies still in the UK in parallel to open banking. Looking across other jurisdictions, we see um, places like Australia and Singapore have also introduced very similar regimes around open banking as well. And it's not just sort of, you know, internationally that we're seeing these trends. Actually, open banking is perhaps something of a blueprint um, that could be um, rolled out to other kinds of financial products looking forward. So um, this model of allowing third parties to come in and access account data using APIs, actually, you know, we're seeing that potentially being looked at for products such as insurance, pensions or, or other investment products. So if you're a third party developer, you need to think about two main questions. Firstly, are you providing a regulated activity? And if you are, can you rely on an exemption? In the EU, the Second Payment Services Directive brought into scope within its regulatory perimeter two new types of open banking services, namely payment initiation services and account information services. In broad terms, customers can consent to third party developers accessing their payment account information and initiating payments on their behalf. But it's not always easy for a third party to developer to assess whether or not it needs to be licensed. So for example, there is an exemption for technical service providers. And in general, these are firms that access and process account information on behalf of or to support the authorised provider without providing the information to the user itself. This gives a flavour of the level of complexity involved in making a determination and assessing whether or not a developer needs to be licensed. So once you've concluded that you are actually providing regulated payment services, that means you probably need to be licensed or possibly registered um, if you're just providing account information services. 
And once you are licensed, then you become subject to a whole host of new regulatory obligations about how you carry on your business. And these are set out uh, both in the payment services regulations in the UK and also technical standards that set out things like the requirements for strong customer authentication, how you communicate with the account bank that you're accessing the accounts of, things like fraud reporting and monitoring um, and dealing with operational incidents. Um, there are also rules around how you um, provide information to your customers, so whether that's on a transaction by transaction basis or actually in your customer terms and conditions. So a whole host of things to think about once you are regulated. And I think it's worth saying here that sort of something that we find is that one of the challenges is about how to interact with different kinds of account banks or account providers. So where you're within the open banking um, sphere, so that's the nine main retail banks in the UK, actually there's a lot of harmonisation in how that works. But actually once you get outside um, of the, the open banking model, actually then you find that um, people have different technical requirements and that can be a challenge for fintechs. Who can benefit from open banking? From a customer perspective, it initially took a, a little bit of time for customers to become comfortable. But as they have become comfortable and started to kind of increase their use of open banking services, this has also attracted different types of third party developers. So whilst initially we saw it was mostly fintechs and new market entrants which were trying to kind of gain access to information held by banks, increasingly we're now seeing banks um, enter into this space. So the types of products have also evolved. Initially there was kind of a focus on retail and consumer products, so budgeting apps, but now we're seeing kind of wholesale corporate uses, including cash pooling services and liquidity management services.